Poppy Playtime has a ton of really unique character designs. So in this video, I'm going to rank all of them from worst to best. I'll be including all characters from the mascot sections on the Poppy Playtime wiki. So no smiling critter card designs or rejected characters. And very sadly, no Boxy Bear on this list because they weren't featured in the right category for this list. Just note that this is all based on my own opinion on what I think makes good character design. So let me know in the comments below who you think has the best design. Anyways, let's get started. Number 15, the Mini Huggies. The main reason for these guys being at the bottom of the list is because of the fact that they're just different colored versions of Huggy. They're not memorable, they're just a placeholder enemy really. Number 14, Cat Bee. Cat Bee is one of the toys that you'll find around the facility and is probably the strangest designed one. Obviously these mini toys have nothing on the actual enemies, so if I just skim through these ones it's because there's just not a lot to talk about. But yeah, Cat Bee is just a strange design, that's about it. Number 13, Candy Cat. Candy Cat makes a bit more sense than Cat Bee, and I find it quite charming, but again there's nothing really to talk about, he's just alright. Number 12, Boogie Bot. Boogie Bot is definitely cute, but that's about it. He doesn't really feel like a Poppy Playtime character, but props to him being adorable. Number 11, Bron. Bron is the first design I do like for the concept of this series being a horror game. Bron is quite a simple design, but a lot could be done with this design for sure, as seen in the trailers for the games and some VHS tapes. However, there just isn't enough of an actual presence in the game for me to place him any higher on the list. Number 10, Kissy Missy. Kissy Missy is probably one of the more important characters of the story as they are one of three main characters who haven't tried to kill you and in chapter 2 and 3 actually assists you in your objectives. Kissy definitely has had some character to her and shows a lot of personality despite never actually saying a word, well until she gets KO'd. The only reason she's not any higher is because once again she is just a reskin of Huggy. Obviously compared to the mini Huggies she has more character but she's just not as solid as some of the other designs on this list. She's definitely a good character though, and it really shows off the human side to these characters. Number 9, Bunzo Bunny. In terms of design, Bunzo serves his purpose very well. Not only does he have a cute design, but he's generally scary in the section that he appears in. His symbols are a nice touch, and I think he has great potential. However, considering he's only in one section, and the section isn't that good, there's just not much presence. And if you never look up or you fail his minigame at all, you just basically will never see him. But he's definitely good for what he is. Number 8, the Ruined Smiling Critters. The Smiling Critter cards are very, very solid and are popular for a reason. And while I think that the Ruined guys have bad jump scares, I think that the designs are definitely solid. I'm ranking every single one of them in one spot because the differences between them are completely minimal and every single one could be someone's favourite. These guys aren't as visually appealing as the next couple of characters, but they are definitely solid. Number 7, Mr. Light. Mr. Light is one of the few designs that has grown on me over time. When I first saw this character, I was a bit skeptical and honestly wasn't a huge fan at all, but over time I've learned to accept her as part of the gang, and I think that she makes for a very solid design. Her fleshy face and human jaw are absolutely terrifying to say the least. While I'm not a big fan of her section, she definitely makes a lasting impression on the player and her build up is pretty nice as well. If I'm being honest, I actually think her usual design is a bit scarier and if there was a scene where she like ripped her face off in front of us, I think her appearance would have made much more of an impact for sure. But for what we got, it's quite alright. Her weapon is actually really creative and I love how they went to being a school teacher vibe although it is a tad overdone with characters like Baldy being around. But I love the idea of this like school-like weapon, it's really cool. Number 6, Poppy. Now Poppy isn't a threat and is your main guide throughout chapters 2 and 3, but for what she lacks in being a physical threat, she does make up for the design. Being quite simple in design, the doll design works really well and for her being the main face of the series, I think she pulls it off really well. She's definitely not anything super special, but for what she is, I think her design fits absolutely perfectly. She's small and a help to the player, but still manages to make you quite not trust her, which I think is perfect for a guide in a horror game. Even though she's more established in being your friend than Chapter 3, she still says things that don't quite feel right, and having her dialogue come from this like small doll I think works really well in my opinion. She can't physically harm you, but who knows what friends she has. Number 5, Mummy Longlegs. Mummy Longlegs is the first character that's one of the actual main threats that you deal with in one of the chapters. And while I think she's the weakest design of the main threats, she doesn't have a bad design at all. 
For starters, her sheer size is nightmare fuel, and I really like her extremely dilated pupils when she chases you in the final section. Managing to take an extremely bright and colourful pink cat like Mummy and make her scary is really well done for sure. Lots of props there. She has a really impactful presence in the chapter that she's in, which is actually my favourite chapter. And I love how she's meant to be this loving mother figure, which contrasts nicely with her trying to kill you. Her spider legs and stretchy limbs are creative ways of making an innocent toy into a monster. And she's definitely a very, very creative design. If you've ever played Project Playtime, you will know that just how well her design works and being creepy as hell with her stretching after you and stuff. It's just, oh god. Now the one thing holding her back, if I'm being completely honest, doesn't have to do with the character herself, but from live streaming this game, I just hate how many people thirst for her. What the f- Number four, PJ Pugapilla. This spot may confuse a lot of people, but I generally think that PJ Pugapilla is one of the most creepy designs for any character in these games. The centipede design is once again really clever with basic toys, and I think in terms of turning a toy into a monster, PJ Pugapilla did it best. Although he doesn't have much of a presence as in some of the other characters, his section in Chapter 2 is by far the scariest. Even on second or third playthroughs, this section is just super scary. And I have to beat the Bunzo section while colorblind. Anyways, besides that, PJ is extremely creepy, and the way that he just smiles at you as he creeps closer is just fucking terrifying. He's just waiting for you to move one inch so he can just kill you, and the way he creeps throughout this whole course, god it's creepy. He's kind of like a snake and a spider combined, which is just freaky, and I hate it and love it all at the same time. Now obviously, this guy is only in one section, and although he makes a huge impact, it's not as much as the next character. Number 3, Dog Day. The Smiling Critters are definitely some of the more popular and cool designed characters, and seeing Dog Day without anything else, and him having the impact that he does, just proves how good his design is. If your first impression on seeing a design is just sheer horror, you know you've done a good job. PJ Pagapillo freaked me out the first time I saw him, but Dog Day just made me feel all kinds of emotions. I was horrified and sympathetic and just in shock, which is something that a lot of games have not been able to do for me. As much as Chapter 3 is not my favourite, I've always loved this scene of Dog Day. He's unbelievably creepy, and obviously the state we find him in is just horrific, and works so well. Dog Day also just really shows the vibe of Chapter 3 quite well. It really gives this strange, culty, and terrible vibe that I really like about Chapter 3. His bright orange works super well, and his black pits for eyes are just horrific, and honestly my favourite part about him. I do like his eyes even in the chase sequence, although I think Black Pits would have been much scarier. My main complaint is, once again, we don't get to see much of him. And I feel that maybe if he was similar to Kissy, like, you know, being that kind of, like, helping character to you, he would have worked quite well. Or have another critter, maybe? But maybe I'm asking for too much. Number 2, Huggy Wuggy. The first main threat in this series, and although Poppy is meant to be the face of the series, it's really Huggy. I mean, there's a reason that the store next to where I work at sell Huggy Wuggy plushies. I mean, for God's sake. But would you expect anything else from Mob Entertainment? Anyways, enough about corporate marketing, and let's talk about how great Huggy's design is. It's no doubt that this guy is just inherently creepy. Not to mention the perfect design for a mascot horror series. Bright blue and wide red lips are super inviting, which is exactly what you want when you're trying to subvert people's expectations with a super horrifying monster. Once again, Huggy's size does him great here. His sheer massive presence is enough to scare the crap out of everyone. Not to mention his long arms and legs serve better than Mummy at times. Well, in terms of horror. I think too, the darker blue allows him to blend more with the background, which is great for a stealth character. His face as he hides in the shadows is just unnerving, and we all remember the first time seeing Huggy's arms slither away behind that door. When Huggy goes into monster mode and his teeth show, god it's scary. Huggy crawling through the vent after you is one of the most terrifying parts in this game, and let's not forget that I think he has the best jump scare out of any character. Now obviously, I don't think he's perfect, but he serves his purpose super well and looks fantastic. However, one character managed to literally carry the series in such a way that the game's perception went from being just a cash grab to one of the best mascot horror series of all time. Number 1, Catnap. Without a doubt, Catnap takes the cake in both character design and probably as one of the best characters in the series. For starters, once again, Catnap is just huge and a terrifying character to be in the presence of. The scenes of him sneaking around playcare and poking his head out to look at you is just creepy as hell. And once again, the wide smile that, like, Dog Day just really helps him make him inviting and unnerving. The concept of Catnap with the red smoke is super cool, 
and really helps sell the mystery and horror this character brings in Chapter 3. The whole chapter, you feel Catnap's presence, even though realistically, he's only on the screen for like 10 minutes of the whole chapter. His eyes are haunting, and when he transforms into the Nightmare Catnap at the end, my god is it terrifying. While I wish that they treated his character a little better and maybe made him a bit more of an active threat, and had him be less visible, mainly critiquing the final boss battle here, he still works perfectly as the main antagonist for this chapter. If I'm being completely honest, the cat character just honestly made me feel a bit unsure at first, but from the moment that I started playing the actual game, I just fell in love with this cat. He is easily the scariest character in Puppy Playtime, and considering that these are horror games, the fact that such a character can convey fear with just their presence alone is a fantastic sign of good horror design. And without a doubt, Catnap has the best character design in all of Puppy Playtime. So there we have it, all character designs from Puppy Playtime ranked from worst to best. Let me know your list in the comments below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, and if you wanna see more content like this, be sure to subscribe as well. Also, I'm also gonna take this opportunity to plug a Discord server that I have. It'd be great if you could join. Anyways, thank you for watching the video, my friend, and I hope to see you in the next video.